In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. On last week's Tips on Tuesday, we talked about the ground tackle, or hardware, of anchoring. This week, we're going to talk about the theory and some real-world applications. There are two main things you need to worry about before dropping the hook. One, is the anchor going to keep me in a safe place? And two, Am I going to get my anchor and chain back without too much damage? Every time you drop the hook, you will get wear and tear on your anchor and chain, but we always want to keep this to a minimum. To start off, I'm going to talk about my rules of thumbs, the rules I use when I drop the hook. First, if I don't like the place I dropped the anchor, and I think I can find a safer, better place, I pull up the anchor immediately. This is one of the first things that Jimp taught me about anchoring. I dropped the hook four times in Curacao and pulled it up four times before I found a spot that I felt comfortable with on the fifth attempt. The problem was due to the currents and the large number of boats in a small confined anchorage. Every time I dropped the hook I moved either out of the anchoring zone or too close to another boat. So therefore, I kept trying until I find a spot that I was comfortable with. 2. The Road I use 4 to 1. This is not set in stone, but this is just a rule of thumb I use. The more chain we have out, the lower the ratio. If the bottom is flat, bad holding, I may want to go to 6 to 1 or maybe even to 8 to 1. Again, it's not set in stone. I think about everything my anchor and chain will come into contact with. Grass, mud, sand, rock, coral, hopefully not, etc. And what is happening on top of the water, i.e. wind, current, waves, tide, and other boats in the anchorage. Sometimes I get this information on charts, sometimes from local knowledge, i.e. other sailors, and of course, taken with a grain of salt, and sometimes Z can just look over the bow of the boat, and sometimes I can see it on a Google overlay, and sometimes I'm almost blind, except for my depth sounder or echo pilot forward-looking sonar. If we know we have good holding from research and local knowledge, we put out the following. We also always back up on our anchor to make sure the holding is what we expected. If the anchorage has poor holding, increased wind, current, or wave action, I put out more chain. And more is relative to the conditions I see and what I expect to see while on the anchor but you also have to think about what that chain will come into contact with on the ocean floor. There are some sailors that like to put out a lot of chain, but if I was in an anchorage of 5 meters and I put out 60 meters or more of chain, I would screw up the spacing for the other boats. If you're all by yourself in an anchorage, you can do whatever you want, but I would not do it in a busy anchorage. Look at boat E. He has 60 meters of chain out. If the wind changes, this is where he's going to end up. Your chain can also get wrapped around what's ever on the ocean floor. It's no fun unwrapping your chain, and if your chain gets wrapped on something close to your boat and you get a wave or two, you can either break your chain or sink your boat. Keep this in mind. When I come into an anchorage with 10 to 15 knots of wind, 
I have a good idea where the other boat's anchors and chains are lying under the water. But if I come into an anchorage with zero wind and zero current, and all the boats are facing different directions, I have no idea where the anchors and chains are laying on the ocean floor. This is one of the most difficult times to anchor, and there are a few things you can do just in case you're not sure. 1. If possible, dive on your anchor, and while you're down there, take a look at your neighbor's chains as well. 2. Put your anchor alarm on a very short leash, and check it as it goes off as the wind changes. 3. The best choice is to anchor about 100 meters from all the other boats, but this is not possible in tight anchorages. 4. I always keep an eye on the other boats and I watch how they move with the changing wind and current. You will find out that the cats don't move the same as the monoholes do and some of the sloops don't move the same as some of the catches do. So you have to keep an eye on the other boats. If it's really tight, and there's no other options, I might think about putting out a few fenders just in case I need them. But I have never been in this situation before. And finally, if we come into a tight anchorage and we see other people on the boats, we'll ask our soon-to-be neighbors a few questions. How much road they have out? And two, if any boats left recently, where they were at anchor? This gives me a good idea how far I need to be away from the other boats and they might point me in the direction of a good anchorage spot I didn't see. 5. I try my best not to drop my anchor unless I know I can get it back aboard. While in the Tuamotos, I had to fetch our buddy boat's anchor in 22 meters of water because the chain got wrapped around a balmy. It's a good idea to have the dive gear aboard and one tank full at all times just in case you have to retrieve your anchor or help a fellow sailor retrieve theirs. Like I said, it's a good idea to keep your karma account full because you never know when you're the one that's going to be needing some help. And the best thing, you might just gain a friend for life. 6. I do my best not to tell other captains where they should drop their hook because when you do this, you take on some responsibility, if not literally, emotionally. If their boat drags and or is damaged after I gave them the location to drop the hook, I would not feel so good. I will tell captains that ask where other boats have anchored or I might tell them where to check out a good spot to anchor, but I will not tell them where they should anchor and there is a difference. 7. When I come in to anchor, I always have my echo pilot on. I look at the place where I want to drop my anchor and the slope of the bottom. I also want to take a look if there's any bombies or reefs close by. I zigzag through the anchorage and try to get a good idea of the bottomscape which will be below Aquarius. If I came into this anchorage from the south, I would choose my spot, let's say here, then I would weave in and out of the boats and watch the echo pilot to make sure that the bottom is good for me. Then I make my way to the final approach which is always straight upwind. I drop the hook and wait till there's enough chain out that the anchor is sitting on the ocean floor and start my reverse. And Aquarius will end up just about here and that's where I want her. 8. Unfortunately, there are some grumpy sailors, or as I call them, GSs, out there. And if you anchor next to one of them, they might get pissed off, turn red, start jumping up and down, and telling you that you shouldn't be anchoring there. You're too close. Always try to anchor safe, but I also try to anchor as far away from a GS as possible. I had one GS tell me to stay away because he had 75 meters out, in a 7 meter anchorage. Even if you are anchored safe, it just makes sense to be as far away from a GS as possible. The best places can be screwed up by a few bad souls. If there are other places to drop the hook, I pick up and go as far away from the GS as possible. Now let's get into the fun of anchoring. 
some real world stuff. Let's say you're at a normal anchorage. Your normal anchorage has 8 meters, mud, sand, or grass, forecasted 5 to 15 knots of wind, and fairly busy with lots of boats. Not much wave action and not much current. Look at the spacing of the boats and find a hole. Also consider the length of the dinghy rides to shore. If there are any boats on moorings, remember they will move differently than the boats on anchor. Your anchor should be dropped at least 1.2 times the amount of road plus the length of your boat from any mooring ball. Zigzag through the boats looking at the depths and how they change. The forward looking sonar lets me look at the sea floor under the water so it's easier to find a place to anchor. My prime directive number one, keep the chain angle to zero. The chain angle dictates the holding power of the anchor. If the chain angle increases, your anchor will drag with less force. So the goal here is to keep the chain angle zero while you're on the anchor. The more the chain out, the smaller the angle. When your boat pulls back with a gust of wind or a fast current, the weight of the chain should keep the chain angle to zero. If not, you need to put out more chain or you can also increase the weight using anchor weights. Anchor weights will effectively increase the chain length. Let's say you used a 10 kilogram weight. It would almost be like adding 10 to 15 meters of chain. Prime directive number two. The chain should be short enough so as not to wrap around rocks, bombies, or rub on anything that could damage the chain. You have to think about everything your chain will come into contact with during your stay on anchor. Other factors. Wave height and boat traffic. Weather patterns. Current. The wind might stay in one direction the entire time you're at an anchorage, and that would make your job quite easy. But if the wind is changing directions as a front passes, or just the normal changes in the daily wind pattern, it can spin all the boats around in circles on their anchors. The current, if any, can also play a large role in the choreographed group boat dance. If you are anchoring in a place with patches of sand and mud with bombies in the mix, you may want to really think what will happen to your anchor chain as your boat dances around your anchor. A few turns on a bombie will make your chain shorter and you can break a chain with a few nasty waves, sending your boat drifting freely into the reef. Another issue is 8 meter tides in some areas. A rising tide with a chain wrapped around a bommy or a rock can also break your chain and or sink your boat. 95 to 99 percent of the time you're going to anchor with a straight chain with your snubber in good holding sand, mud, flat bottom, 5 to 15 meters with hardly any wind, no problem. But if there's rocks or bombies in the mix, this is where you can show off your ball skills, even if you're a woman. The goal here is to keep the chain angle at zero degrees next to the anchor, but keep the chain off the ocean floor 15 meters or so away from the anchor. I have two balls, but maybe I'll need three if it's a long road.
think we're hooked in there pretty good. So we're just gonna leave it like that and uh, party on Bella Marina tonight. Really deep anchorages with large waves and add a bit of wind, you may need to get creative. Floats and weights might be the answer, but I've never had to do this. I don't feel safe anchoring in bad conditions, especially in deep water. But it might be necessary at some point, so this is what I would consider. If I had to do this, it would probably mean that I effed up my research before I pulled up my anchor at the last anchorage. Oh my God, this is the most beautiful morning we have had in a long time. Look at this. And our buddy boat Bella Marina is right beside us. This is Taha. Oh, you can't see our cool anchoring job. This is our cool anchoring job. And our anchor should be close by. Look at the anchor chain, it just goes around in kind of a circle. And right over here, oh, there's our anchor right there. But you can see the balmies. And you don't want your anchor chain to get wrapped around them. Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? So now we're in Bora Bora. And in Bora Bora, we just dropped anchor a little while ago with Bella Marina. I don't know if you can see Bella Marina over there. But we're right next to one of the motos. We dropped in what I believe is all sand, but we're gonna go take a look at the anchor here. Um, we didn't float the anchor here, and we're anchored just slightly different. So let's go take a look at the anchor here just off the moto in Bora Bora.
as you can see, we're wrapped up on a little piece of coral. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our anchor and we're going to float it. And that should fix it. I should have floated it, I guess, the first time. But I was hoping that it was all sand. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those. They said they came from Spanish.